Well, hey there. Welcome to Reading Rainbow. I'm just kidding. Did anybody remember that show? It was on PBS or whatever, like daytime television. Anyways, so most times on Thursdays, I post some training footage and then I read an older blog post uh, while you guys watch some training footage. But I'm doing a little switch up to the training methodology. So I'm kind of stockpiling some of that footage and next week I'm gonna put out a week of bodybuilding program that I've just started. So stay tuned for that. And instead, you're gonna to have to look at my ugly face as I read uh, one of our older blog posts. And this one is all centered around how you stretch prior to warming up. And it is conveniently called, look at that lighting. You are stretching wrong. So how can we become more bendy? Stretching is a key part in any exercise routine that not only gets us prepared for the task at hand, but also helps us gain range of motion and recover. Today I want to cover some of the general errors I see and how we can be more aware, efficient, and effective with our stretching. Stretching? That's not in my vocabulary. If that's you, it kind of sounds like me, but this is why it shouldn't be you because, first off, if you're not stretching, you're definitely doing it wrong. According to the Harvard Medical School, stretching not only keeps the muscle flexible, but also strong and healthy so when it comes time to move our joints, they're ready to spring into action. Not stretching puts you at a risk of joint pain, strains, and muscle damage. Who knew? I feel like most of us already knew this, yet we still aren't as religious about our stretching as we should be. Maybe that has to do with not knowing when, how, or for how long to stretch. So, let's dive into that. Before working out, we're getting ready to start our workout. We know we should stretch, but we skip it and just get to work. We'll loosen up as we go. It'll be fine. No harm, no foul, right? Wrong. Imagine we froze a rubber band and tried to yank on it immediately after taking it from the freezer. It may stretch a bit, but continue to stretch it further, eventually it'll tear or even break. This is the same issue we run into when we don't stretch before working out. Without some stretching prior to exercise, our muscles are these shortened, frozen rubber bands unprepared to move through a range of motion. So let's say we've read only until this point, or listened only until this point. For my non-readers out there, I see you guys. Closed out the browser, called it a day. We're back in the gym, ready to hit our next workout. Now we have a better understanding of why we should stretch. So, we plop down into our favorite stretch and hold it for two minutes. Mission accomplished, right? Mark stretching off of our checklist of things to do today, right? Wrong again. See, look, perfect timing with the clouds and everything. To take it back to our frozen rubber band analogy, if the first thing you do upon coming to the gym is yank on our muscles in a forceful stretch, our muscles are still cold. They're not ready to be lengthened so vigorously. Also. Our stretch should mimic the activities we're about to partake in. Most exercises don't include laying on the floor for two minutes at a time, not moving. So how is that in any way going to prepare us for the task that we're about to do? That's meant to be rhetorical, but if we're not catching on, stretching in this manner is not helpful to our working out. So what the hell do we do now? Well, first thing we can do is get the blood flowing and raise our internal body temperature through two to five minutes minimum, not maximum, minimum of some cardio. Then we can stretch all we want. This could be jumping rope, jogging, rowing, biking, elliptical, etc. We just need to get some gentle, consistent movement before anything. As for the type of stretching we're doing, we might want to consider stretching those areas that are already sore for maintenance sake. We already just discussed how laying on the ground, stretching for minutes at a time, also known as static stretching, doesn't really get us going. So with that, how are we supposed to get ready? Well, that would be dynamic stretching. I know, very creative, right? Dyma dynamic stretching is where we move through a range of motion, key word here is move, increasing body temperature and blood flow, and we're also lengthening the now warm muscle. If we really wanted to be efficient, we can do these stretches in between our warm-up sets. Another thing to keep in mind is that your warm-up should progress from low intensity to high intensity. The further along you get into it, 
If you're having trouble visualizing this, there's a video on the YouTube channel that lays out a great general warm-up that you can accomplish in 10 minutes, and it'll get you feeling ready to go regardless of what you're doing. So check that out. When it comes to after working out, we gotta stretch a little different. So we got our blood flowing, internal body temperature up, dynamic stretching's out of the way. Remember, that's moving through a range of motion. Now we got our work on it. All done, nothing left to do, right? Wrong again. This is the greatest opportunity to get in some stretching. Now that we've completed our workout, we're likely very warm and in need of some down regulating of our system in order to come back to normal. This is where we want to do our static stretching. Staying in a stretch anywhere from two to four minutes after working out can help calm our nervous system, increase length in the muscle, adding to our overall range of motion in the long term, and signal that it's time to shift gears and move on with our day. Just like our dynamic stretching in our warm-up, where we targeted the areas we're about to use, we want to target the areas that we just used in our cool down. If you have specific problem areas like tight hips, that's me, all the way, uh, stiff low back, etc. These are also great areas and great time to focus on those. So in summary, to cap it off, let's review. If you're not stretching at some point, you're putting yourself at risk of strain or injury. When it comes to stretching prior to exercise, we shouldn't go into a cold. Never, ever, never. We should do some light cardio beforehand to raise that temperature, hence not being cold, um, and get the blood flowing. Stick to dynamic stretching and holding stretches for no longer than 30 seconds when it comes to saving more time. We can also do these stretches in between our warm-up sets. If you're looking for some stretches, check out our Tip Tuesday playlist. I'll link it up here. There's plenty on there. After our workout, we'll transition to the static stretching where we'll hold positions or stretches for two to four minutes to increase the length of the muscle over time and also aid in the recovery process by flushing out byproducts of exercise. If we have more troublesome areas, this is also a great chance to take advantage of our warmth and fix the more persisting flexibility issues we have. As always, thanks for the read or for the listen this time, my friends. Look, there's the sun again. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you are a visual person and you'd like to see all this laid out, you can go to trainenable.net. That's our website there. You can follow us on Instagram at train underscore and underscore able. Um, you are obviously on our YouTube or you're watching this on Facebook. The page is all the same. But thank you guys. Happy pre-Friday, and I will see you on the next one.